Hello, my name is Alex Isles. I'm now standing in the College Valley in Northumberland National Park at Hefpool Stone Circle. And this is a massively impressive stone circle. It's 61 meters by 42 meters in an oval shape right here in the valley floor. So just behind me, you can see one of the stones right here and it's around about one meter high. So each of the stones, many of them have been knocked over in time and you can see evidence of medieval farming coming down a hillside here. So this landscape has been changed since Neolithic age when the stone circle would have been erected. But all the way around here, you can see stones in the ground and these stones in the ground right here are the remains of what would have been probably one of the largest stone circles in the British Isles. And when you've got this massive stone circle here, it shows again the ritual significance of this landscape. When you've got this landscape here, you've got amazing valleys where you can be farming on both sides here. And then later on, when you get into the Iron Age, there's a small Iron Age hill fort just above me on this hill. And then on this hill right here, Great Hefter, there is another Iron Iron Age hill fort, so Great and Little Heather, right on those two hilltops right there, have Iron Age hill forts. So not only has the landscape been important during the Neolithic when they're erecting these stone circles, but then it continues to be as you go into the Iron Age as well. What's also interesting about this stone circle is that the stones themselves are also marked with cup and ring markings from the Neolithic period. So some of these stones would have been quarried or collected from other locations where Neolithic farmers had already previously used them and then they would have erected them throughout the landscape just as you can also see with the Duddo stones or the Duddo five stones where they've also done the same thing there as well where those stones have been taken and erected but they also have Neolithic rock, to, rock art in them as well. So what you see is in this period is that the Bronze Age farmers, these Bronze Age people who have settled in and around the landscape, they have started taking the Neolithic monuments from the landscape and they're bringing them together so that they can have the legitimacy of the ancient culture from the Neolithic people alongside their own new culture that they've brought in. And so that's how you can see this transition in the Bronze Age, where not only are they building henges and wooden henges, but then they upgrade into these stone circles right here. And this would have been an incredibly important location back in the Bronze Age, because you've got fertile hills controlling a valley with hill forts all the way around here and cairns on top of the hills as well. So this is an incredibly important ritual space and it's also very close to both Yevering Bell and Simonside, two very important sites during the Bronze Age and later on in the Iron Age as well. Looking at sites like Stonehenge, which has survived a lot better, you could almost imagine these stones all being one meter high in this location and it being a gathering location for numerous tribes from all over what is now Northumberland to come together for ritual meetings, possibly to arrange marriages, to organize tribal alliances, but also to build confidence and um, legitimacy for the tribal aristocracy who are this Bronze Age elite connected into the Mediterranean world for their trade networks, but also as well with their own power, their own ability to produce both food and also wonderful items right up here in Northern Britain as well. These stones may also have been higher in the past and they may have been broken up in later periods to be used for walls or things like that. So we don't actually know exactly what this stone circle would have looked like during the Bronze Age, but we can guess from looking at it that it would have been an incredibly important piece of the landscape during that period. If you've enjoyed the video, please do like and subscribe, share it with your friends and alongside that as well, if you'd like to support the channel, I do have a Patreon where you can be involved in helping to shape the content that I produce in the future. Until next time though, stay safe and well and thank you so much.